Is it already time for Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss to start panicking? How's it going, everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. I know what y'all are asking. Two episodes in back-to-back -back days? What? Well, yeah, you know, there's a lot I wanted to talk about this week, and I didn't want to cram it all into one huge episode. I wanted to give everything a good amount of time to be discussed, and so that's what I'm doing here today. And like I teased at the opening, uh, this episode's about Jimmy Johnson and a couple other drivers. I'll also be previewing Las Vegas. I'll be giving you my picks for that race at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. But for starters, I want to play a little game. At least a game by myself. It's a one-player game that you guys are invited to watch. Now, I don't really have a cool name for this game, so let's just call it... Uh, let's see how freaked out you should be. Sounds stupid. Yeah, but anyway, in this segment, I'm gonna talk about a few drivers who are not off to the best of starts so far in 2018. And I'm gonna analyze using my trusty little chart right here, uh, just how nervous or how stressed, how worried these teams should be about their poor performance so far. Now I'm gonna start off with a rookie driver that many of you've probably heard of, William Byron. Yeah, look at him right there on the meter. How worried should William Byron and his team be after their poor start to the season. I mean, Byron, he spun at Daytona, had issues there, uh, and then he did not have a very good race. I talked about in yesterday's episode, he did not have a very good race at Atlanta, struggled heavily with the handling on his car, finished 18th. He currently sits 25th in the overall point standings. I know it's early, so maybe this is a little early to be talking about any of this, but I like to get ahead of things. How worried should William Byron be to start this season? I'm not going to put this too high. I'm going to give this a 30 of, I guess as a scale of 1 to 100, I'll give him a 30. So he's not too worried. Zero being not worried at all, 100 being extremely worried, your blood pressure's through the roof. I'm gonna give William Byron and team a 30. I mean, he should be a little worried because he's got a lot of hype behind him. I mean, William Byron came to the truck series, dominated, came to the Xfinity series, dominated. He's coming to the cup series, and two races in, he looks kind of out of his element. And I know he's driving for a team. Keep in mind that that 24 car used to be Casey Kane's five car, and Casey Kane has not run well since has not run well the last few years. So I don't know how much of this we can put on Byron versus how much we have to put on the car and the team. Uh, but need to say, 24 car's not looking that great right now. There's plenty of time for him to learn. I mean, think about Daniel Suarez last year. He started the year, kind of came on late last second because Carl Edwards unexpectedly retired and really didn't look great at first, but worked his way up, worked his way up. And by the end of the season, he looked like he could have been a playoff driver. And I talked in yesterday's episode about how he was one of the, if not the most impressive young drivers in this week, last week's race at Atlanta. So William Byron will definitely improve. He's not going to stay 25th in points for very long, probably, but there's a little bit of reason to be concerned. Moving on, the next one's also a pretty young driver, a second year driver, Eric Jones. How worried should Eric Jones be? Eric Jones currently sits 23rd in points against Early. Uh, he DNF'd at Daytona after being caught up in one of the big ones. Uh, he finished 11th at Atlanta, although he did not have a great race car. 11th is actually the highest he ran all day. They made good gains on the car, I guess, uh, but still 11th at Atlanta, nothing great. Uh, so uh, there's a little bit of concern for Eric Jones and that team. But if you ask me, I'm not too worried. Eric Jones did lead laps in the Daytona 500 and was running up in the top six or seven when that wreck happened that took him out. So I'm not super worried. I'm definitely a little concerned by the fact that they were no good at all at Atlanta Motor Speedway, that they ran in the mid-teens all race long and spent most of the time a lap down. I'm a little concerned about his crew chief, Chris Gale. I tweeted about this a little bit during the race, but I think it's interesting that Joe Gibbs Racing, I get why they replaced Jones. Uh, they put Jones in there instead of Kenseth. I get it, it was money more than anything. But why did they put Chris Gale on the box instead of veteran crew chief Jason Ratcliffe, who's won 15 races with Kenseth over the last five years, and, I mean, won in their second-to-last race together? I'm a little surprised with why they moved Ratcliffe from that role. Because Chris Gale, I get it, he might be good. He's, he's had success in the past. He's done well in the Xfinity Series crew chiefing, of course. But last year he was with Furniture Row Racing, the same team that had the 78 car, which dominated the season and won the championship. Meanwhile... Chris Gale, Eric Jones in that 77 car, didn't even make the playoffs. I don't know how much that was really Chris Gale's fault versus the resources that he had to work with, uh, but I just that makes me a little skeptical and it makes me a little surprised that they brought him over to the 20 car. That's the only reason I'm going to give Eric Jones a 20%, a 20 on this how worried should he be. What did I call this meter? I already forgot it was some stupid name. But anyway, I'm going to give him a 20 because, like I said, he was fast at least at Daytona, so they have some speed. I just hope they get a grip on the handling. Next on my list, I have Chase Elliott. And now Chase Elliott's currently 19th in points. He also DNF'd at Daytona after that wreck with him and Keselowski. Uh, he ran 10th at Atlanta Motor Speedway, uh, but much like many of his Hendrick teammates, didn't 
really have that good of a handle on the car for most of the day. He was definitely the best of his Hendrick cars, of his Hendrick teammates. So how worried should, Eric, should Chase Elliott be? And now don't worry, I will get to these top halves of this meter, but also I think Chase Elliott should be at about a 10% worry. He shouldn't really be worried at all. I mean, he already looks like he's the best of the Hendrick four. Uh, I think that the Hendrick cars are only gonna get better from this point forward. And if he's still finishing 10th with a crappy race car, I think Chase Elliott is in good shape. I picked Chase Elliott to make it all the way to Homestead this year at the beginning of the year, and I think he's still on a good trajectory to hopefully make that happen. Uh, I don't think he needs to worry that much. I'm, that, that's all I gotta say. I don't think Chase Elliott needs to worry. It's people, I like a lot. Chase Elliott's got a lot of fans. I feel like Chase Elliott fans get worried about stuff very easily. I don't think they have a lot to worry about. I think he's gonna win races this year. Maybe not these first few weeks while the Hendrick, or the, the Chevys work out the new Camaro, but he's gonna win races this year, guys. I'm. I'm pretty confident. Last on my list, and probably the reason you clicked on this video, uh, is Jimmy Johnson. That's right, I've been talking about all these young drivers with not, without that much experience. Now we're gonna talk about a big one. Probably, arguably the best driver in NASCAR history. Now Jimmy Johnson, currently two races in, sits 35th, yes that's right, 35th in points. He wrecked three cars during Daytona Speed Weeks. He wrecked out of the Clash, he wrecked out of the Duels, and he wrecked out of the Daytona 500. Granted, most of those wrecks weren't really his fault, but goodness, it's just, man, it was just bad luck, I guess, but still. Getting bad vibes from that 48 car. He comes into Atlanta, a track he's historically been very good at, and ran terribly. He was running in the 20s most of the race. At one point, he was two laps down before he ultimately cut a tire, spun out, wrecked his right front, blew up. He ended up finishing 27th, and I know it's early. I know Oh, it's early, but I can't help but be really nervous about Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss right now. In fact, I'm gonna give Jimmy Johnson a 75 on my little my little anxiety meter thing. They should be worried. Fans of Jimmy Johnson should be worried. I'm not even a Jimmy Johnson fan, and I'm worried for him because I hate to see this be the end of an era. But is this the final decline for Jimmy Johnson? It seems like it's kind of come out of nowhere, but it's been a rough... 10 months for the 48 car. Jimmy Johnson's currently on a 25 race winless streak. That is, you won't believe this, that's the longest winless streak he's had in his entire cup career. Which for starters, I've gotta say, a 25 race winless streak is not that bad, but which just speaks volumes as to how amazing his career has been. But the fact that he is now at his older older age, he's the oldest full-time cup series driver this year, it, the fact that he's now that his that this winless streak is coming on raises concerns. I mean, I bet he still knows how to drive race cars. I think maybe Chad Knauss, they're just not ahead anymore mechanically. They, I mean, the Camaros have definitely set them back even further. But even last season, they won three races early on in the season, but the whole second half of the season, they did not look like themselves. They just kind of lost a handle on things. And it just looks like right when they were maybe trying to finally recover, Chevy switches the cars around completely and now they're kind of back to square one and they just seem like they're adapting to things slower than other teams right now. So excuse me, but I'm going to be, I'm pretty concerned if I'm Jimmy Johnson. I know it's only two races, but I'm factoring in the 23 races at the end of last season where he was really never a major, major factor. So 48 team, Hendrick Motorsports, there's reason to be a little concerned. You don't have to all out panic yet. I don't think anyone needs to completely panic yet, but if Jimmy Johnson's gonna send out these weird tweets, this one right here where he talks about fear and rising up to face fear or whatever the heck he's talking about, if Jimmy's gonna feel like he needs to post that after just two kind of rough races, that makes me think maybe Jimmy thinks we're supposed to be panicking because I don't know, this might be saying a lot without even really meaning to. If Jimmy Johnson feels like he needs to send this out to like calm everyone down, he must think we're really panicking, or he must think we have a good reason to be panicking. So anyway, I just think it's it's uh, it's weird that the 48 team is not as dominant as they were in the mid 2000s, and like since every basically every year they've been so good. I expected this to be kind of a turnaround year for Jimmy Johnson. I expected this to be almost like a comeback season for him after what like we've been talking about was kind of the down year last year. I expect this year to be a huge year for him and. He's not off to a great start. I mean, Hendrick Motorsports seems a little bit behind right now, but that's expected. But even then, Jimmy looks like the second or third best car in Hendrick Motorsports. And if you're a seven-time champion and the most established veteran on your team, uh, I think you expect to be better than that. And I, I think Jimmy does. And that's probably why he sent out this creepy tweet or whatever, because this this motivational tweet, because he, he needs... He knows that that he should be doing better. He expects better of himself. He knows we expect better from him. And I think he's just, I th maybe, I guess this is his way of kind of letting us all know that he understands that there's a lot of pressure on him and that he's supposed to perform. He's not, I don't think he's letting this get to his head too much, but I think it's interesting. I asked you all on Twitter, how worried should Jimmy Johnson and his team be uh, due to their slow start to the 2018 season? And these are the results that we got right here. 
It looks like you guys aren't quite as worried maybe as I am. Looks like most of you guys are at least a little bit worried though, but not too worried. And I guess that makes sense. Jimmy Johnson's a seven-time champion. He's won 83 races, I think, in the Cup Series. I mean, he deserves the benefit of the doubt, but I feel like we said that about him all year last year. We kept saying, oh, he'll turn it on in the playoffs. He'll turn it on the playoffs. He'll turn it on the playoffs. He never turned it on in the playoffs. So that's why I'm a little skeptical. So uh, it's interesting to see what you guys think. Thanks for uh, voting, everybody. Anyway, that's going to do it for whatever the heck I called that little game, that little segment. Uh, that's... That's all I got there. Lastly, before I go, I promised I'd talk about picks for Las Vegas, and I got them uh, right, right, right here. I'm picking the winner of the race at Las Vegas to be Brad Keselowski. I'm sticking with the Fords, at least for one more week. I mean, they were good at Daytona. They were great at Atlanta. I'm going to say they're still going to be pretty good at Las Vegas. I'm going to give them one more week of dominance. I think it's Keselowski's turn. He's won it at Las Vegas twice already in his career. He's very good here. He was very good at Atlanta. I think Keselowski's a pretty safe pick. And Keselowski might as well win, just complete the trifecta. You know, I'm not a big Austin Dillon fan, I'm not a big Kevin Harvick fan, and I'm not a big Brad Keselowski fan. I don't dislike any drivers, but if I had to pick my three least favorite drivers, it would probably be those three. So might as well complete the trifecta. Go win, Brad. I don't, I'll, I'll deal with it. Also, it'd be kind of funny if we see the two, three, and four cars winning the first three races of the year. I guess not quite in the right order, but... All I can say is I'll put some pressure on Jamie McMurray the next race. One, two, three, four. Other good choices for Las Vegas if you're setting a fantasy team. Kevin Harvick. I mean, gosh, like I said, Ford seemed to be good. I mean, he dominated Atlanta. Las Vegas is similar in size, but maybe not in really the way it drives to Atlanta. But it's, it's a mile and a half. Harvick will be good. Martin Truex has dominated mile and a half the last couple of years. Uh, we haven't quite seen the speed from him yet this year that we've seen last year, but I think it's coming, and maybe it comes as we're going to Las Vegas. Denny Hamlin's a good pick. Joey Logano, I think, is also a pretty decent pick. Penske cars have looked pretty decent so far, so Joey will probably be decent as well. Uh, that's that's Those are my picks. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's Out of the Groove. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk about NASCAR stuff multiple days a week, every single week during the season. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Dex Racing, to participate in other polls and stuff like that that I post uh, in the future for future episodes. Keep an eye out for those. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great uh, race weekend in Las Vegas. I'll see you guys again next week. Have a good one.